hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Santa. We welcome yep. to the studio, Landon Barker. Woo. Thank you, thank you. First time ever. I know. But like, I've known you. Are you ready for this? I've right. known you like in passing, like from just like seeing you out socially or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I gave a talk at your school. Which one? When you were a small child. What school? Uh, I, we don't need to talk about it, but it was a, it, I don't want to say the name, but it was like a hippie school. Okay, you grew I, your, I got it. You yeah. grew your own vegetables that you ate at lunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had never heard of a school that did that. That is so crazy. And I was there. Yeah, you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you give a speech wow. about? I, so, I don't, like, I was working with this guy in radio whose, like, wife was your teacher, and they had speakers in. Got we it. were in different fields, and they're like, can you got come it. in and talk about radio? And following your dreams and all that bull squash. And I was like, yeah, fine. And I did. Right, right, and right. And you were there. That's so, f that's in, that's insane. How do I know you were there? Because in school, okay, you were like a, you know, you're a little snotty asshole a little bit. I was completely. But then you <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was like snotty. I nah, was more just like, yes. like class clowny, like that's super it. like attention-y. Like I just wanted to like, um... I, I don't know. I just wanted like I, I I didn't like school, so I didn't focus in classes. So I kind of just like would try and like get through the day by like finding ways to make myself laugh. But uh, wait, I want to continue. I want to continue hearing this. No, so no, so no. what happened? No, it was all it was all good. I was just <laughs> okay, okay. You had six style, and then I do. It, it is interesting. You know, I know this as I'm old and been through life. You know, people are different. Like one different stage of life, but also you are a different you in school than you are in real life. You know totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and by the way, like school for most people is not a great place. Totally sucks, right? And yeah. you figure out different ways to channel and place that energy, right, right, right. And the you in a classroom is like so not the you you are in the real world. Same thing with teachers, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And also, I feel like in school, I, I'm super high ADHD, OCD. Me too. So I was always like pissing teachers off just because like I can't sit still, so I'm sitting there with my leg, <laughs> or I'm sitting there like clicking a pencil. The teachers did not like me off bat just because of like that. At what stage in life are you trying to figure out music? Because obviously, like every duh, your dad is Travis Barker, right, right, right. So you're around music literally for before, the second you come out of the womb. But like, it, it, there is something to like channeling that ADHD, channeling that OCD energy, and putting it somewhere creative. Yeah, dude, totally. That I mean, that that's why. Like, well, first off, like I've always loved music. But I feel like when I was in school growing up, uh, I, the, there's definitely that point where you make that switch to where you're like, okay, it's time to start focusing my career. But you don't make that switch for like, I feel like a, a long time. And um, when I finally made the switch to start like taking music seriously, it, it, it was all just from seeing other people kind of like doing it at my age. Like, dude, I started out rapping. When I was younger, I saw like Matt Ox. I'm not sure if you remember Matt Ox um, blowing up with the with the fidget spinners and whatnot. And I'm like, dude, that could be me. And I see him with all my my favorite rappers growing up, like Lil Uzi and gosh, so so many other rappers. I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, like, damn, they, like that should be me. Cause like you always have the. It's always like you need to see somebody in your age gap yeah. area kind of doing better than you. For you to be like, oh, I need to get on my shit. Well, it could also like doing better, but also just doing it. I think a lot of yeah, people yeah, yeah, are afraid yeah, yeah, yeah. to take leaps until they see somebody who may look like them or come yeah. from the same area as them yeah. or be in the same age group as them, doing it and taking a risk. Right. And I feel like those people that take the leaps and end up doing well is like, that's where originality really comes from. I get that. And also yeah. great success comes from that. You know? Of course. Yeah. And I feel like that's like another thing that everybody's shooting for is like, to be like original, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's another thing that I see my, I keep on hitting this mic. <laughs> that's another thing that I see myself trying to always like do is like, cause everybody has like that subconscious need to like, you see something cool, you want it. You see a guy walking down the street. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I see one of my favorite artists in a shirt. I'm like, damn, that shirt's sick. But if I would have went shopping and saw that shirt, I probably wouldn't have thought it was sick. Like, he made it sick. Yeah, the validation. You know what I mean? So it's 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 like a current search for, like, I guess, trying to be original and trying to be cool, you know? And, and how do you—and, yes, like, you are 
inspired by things that are happening all around yeah, you yeah, and yeah. things you, you see human beings wear, do, whatever. And then on top of that, like, you, you do exist in a family that is of musical talent. And right, right, right. to be inspired would just be to exist, right? Yeah, literally. How do you balance that with originality? I feel like that's something that I'm still trying to figure yeah. out, you know? Because it's so, once again, it's so easy to just take inspiration. It's so hard to be original. Like, everything comes from something. Like, if you look at top top 100 songs, I guarantee you one of the ones in the top 100 list are a sample from some older song, you know? <laughs> everything comes from something. And, I, and I've kind of started to realize that. So I, it's like there's a blessing and a curse with, like, biting off somebody else, you know? Uh. But there is originality in the fact that you're bringing to life stories and songs that are unique to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the single that we're talking about today, Friends With Your Ex, that is relatable to many but stems from your reality. Correct. Yeah, man. Um, it totally does. And I feel like as a singer and a songwriter, uh, that was kind of my goal. It's like, yeah, I'm going to write about what's going on in my life, but I'm also going to make it broad enough to where you or you could take it and kind of relate it to a situation in your own life. Like, cause sometimes like, like one person can hear the song and, and listen to it and be like, damn, like this is kind of a song about falling in love. And then another person can listen to a song and be like, damn, like that's about his situation. Hmm. So you can get a whole bunch of views on the song. And I feel like that's, that's a cool way of like making music versatile in its own way. You know, when you're a hundred percent. And and again, like I think, in the age of originality, like you listen to things and yeah, everything's derived from something. And yeah, sonically, yeah. it's so hard to be a hundred percent unique. Yeah, a hundred years totally accurate. But what hopefully nobody's taking is your life and story, right? So how yeah. do you bring that to life and share it, or the the, the, the songs you craft around somebody else's life and story? My, th that's where originality can really shine. But also, I don't know, like it is, it, it's very difficult. Also, you're you're in a genre that is. Not necessarily like thriving, thriving. Yeah. Alternative music yeah. is not thriving the way it used to. No, absolutely not. And I feel like that's why in my music, even like I made this song a year ago, you know, and it's so crazy how long shit takes to come out. But yeah, like why? Yeah. Every single song that I see myself making, I just keep on getting more poppy and poppier and like more mainstream minded. Mm. Because I feel like I'm going to chase, like, a mainstream sound. And it's uh, still going to be authentic to me. I'm going to chase a mainstream sound until, like, I'm at a level where I feel like I can just be myself and be super experimental, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but I definitely think I was capable of um, adding pop accents into that song. And I did it. And I feel like that's what... 100%. What, what why I'm so excited about this one because it is like alternative and it is very um how do I say it's very uh likable for pop punk kids mm -hmm. and emo kids and then it's also very likable for people who like don't really give a fuck about pop punk music and are down for just listening to alternative music or rock music or pop music you know and that's really what I'm trying to chase is like not 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 put myself in a box like I, I feel like I feel like it's so easy to put yourself in a box and be like, I can only make this genre. Like I'm down to make whatever. I, I, I feel like I've grown up on all sorts of types of music, and I just want to experiment. And that's really what what I what I'm trying to do after this song. So you, you know, I get that. Like so, this record is your honest truth, and it is poppy, and you can still experiment while having pop tendencies. Right. At the end of the day, like, why do you need to sh chase? Or go after, or or even hit, aim for the target of like a mainstream success, when the reality is like you can just make the art you want, and, and I say that like you do have the freedom, right? In a yeah, sense? yeah. Well, but more what I mean by that is like I'm kind of trying to chase um, mainstream audiences yeah. first, you know, and then I want I want like. 
the people that are because I'm trying to kind of build a bigger fan base even and not only because I, I I do have a fan base but this is my first single you know <laughs> so I don't really have a music fan base so I'm uh, this 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 song's authentic to me I'll make like a- every song that I, I'll ever put out I'm not gonna put it out just because I think it sounds mainstream you know but I am going to, when I'm in the studio I'm gonna be like yeah I, I I'll incorporate this whatever this is to make it a little bit more mainstream and easy to listen to because I feel like if I go like full Kanye West Donda <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit hard for people to like tap in right away you know what I mean because I feel like I'm I, I consider myself very creative and a lot of the stuff that like I'd be making if I just dived in and made it like however I wanted wouldn't get across as well as like stuff that I'd make while thinking about other people and how I can move other people it. while still being authentic to myself, you know? Totally. Totally. That's why I'm trying not to, like, jump into, like, full full uh, craziness yet. But, dude, on my album, I definitely will. So why'd you sit on this song for over a year? So I made the song. Um, when dude, emotions I, were fresh? or Yeah, when emotions were pretty fresh. I wrote the song with uh, Nick Long and... Dude, funny enough, I had Ian Dior on it. Really? Yeah, so I had Ian Dior on it, and he was releasing an album at the time that um, it was supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. And then I had some other stuff going on, like in my personal life and relationship, and I just like had a whole date. Everything was ready to come out, and I was like, I can't put this out right now. I was like, I'm not happy in my life. I need to find happiness in my own life and and outside of the internet and outside of of uh what what everybody else sees and and more like internally dive into like what makes me happy and kind of prioritize that first i was just i felt like i was in a dark place i was uh like not really focusing on like my relationships and and i just i just didn't it didn't feel right you know so I made sure to like get back on my toes and and I made sure I was in a in, in a in a good mental state and then I called up my manager. I was like, "All right, I'm ready to put this out." When you look in order and you take time, like what what was what was the do you find like a cause or a reason or what was fueling those emotions and Yeah, there was definitely like relationship problems for me. Um I was drinking a lot. Uh I definitely have an addictive personality, and I, I, I was going a little overboard on drinking. Um, I didn't like the way I looked. Like, I wasn't being healthy. I was just, I, I, I just overall, I just knew, like, if I kept continuing to live like that, I, I wouldn't be happy, you know? Like, fucking up good friendships and relationships around me. Like, I didn't go we I, I went weeks without talking to, like, all my, my friends and, and whatnot over one story situation that like really had affected me didn't go outside for weeks and we had that date and I just called my manager and I was like we have to cancel this song um I'm not ready and I I I just I just knew it wasn't right you know and and now now it just feels so right what changes though like what makes it right today that didn't exist before um I feel like One, I'm almost like almost over a month sober, um, which is congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, dude, I, I feel so much better. That's really um, hard. You should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. Yeah, dude, I, I'm I'm over a month sober. I I uh, feel like I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm being a better person, and that's making me happy. I've I fixed all my relationships that I I feel like I like kind of self destructed, and it, it it's. It's crazy how much like when you I, I actually made a song about this. It's uh like you you don't realize what you have until it's gone type of thing. A hundred percent. And I felt like I I really had like a wake up call and I didn't really like realize what I had until it was gone at that point. So I uh luckily every, I was able to fix everything. Um but I, I had a I had a few like relationship close calls and and uh yeah just overall i just felt like i was at like a a low point 
And I feel like if I'm going to be out here going on like podcasts and going out promoting this and promoting this song and this music video, I don't want to promote like a like a fake happy persona, you know? Uh, that, that's why I was like, I'm going to wait until I'm extremely happy in life and ready and inspired and so, so I could put my heart into it, you know? I feel like that that's really what's important to me when it, when it comes to music. Yeah, you know, when you pri- prioritize yourself, everything else ends up falling into place. Mm-hmm. Um, totally. It, so it is... It, I, I had no idea that you are going through all that. Yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, it wasn't like... It wasn't it wasn't for too long, honestly, but but I, I definitely had like a wake up call that I feel like I needed. I was like, dude, I'm just like sitting around. Um I, I, I kinda had this weird mentality too, where I was like thinking that like all like the 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 pieces of the puzzle were kinda just gonna like solve themselves for me, if that makes any sense. Like like I just felt like Okay, well, when I when I when I release a song, everything's everything's gonna be okay, and then I I kind of had to take a step back and like realize no, that's like not how it, how it works, you know. Like I feel like I, I at the end of the day because like number one before anything else, I feel like is is mental health. Ah. Like like as long as you're if you're not okay, how are you gonna sit here and um, push? all this other stuff that should be coming second. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 and I, and I look at that a lot. And a lot of people, like, friends of mine even, that I see and they, they're like, I'm not okay. Like, music friends, too. They're like, dude, I'm not okay. I'm having a bad day. And then you see them posting on Instagram the next day, and they're posting a photo smiling or, or promoting a new song. And, excuse me, it's like, I, I I don't want to do that. I, want, I really just wanted to make sure that everything in my life was going okay before I can show the world who I am, you know? Instead of showing people, like, a fake persona once again, I feel like that's, like... Nobody has time for, like, bullshit, by the way, and I think people read through nonsense like that. Mm-hmm. And also people respect honesty because at the end of the day, like, that honesty can help somebody else who may be going through the same thing or yeah, 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 maybe yeah, afraid yeah. to take that break that is so vitally needed. Yeah, dude. Grab that mic. Yeah, by can the you way. bring that mic? Oh yeah, you? yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's no, okay. I'm, dude, I took like three of those coffees out there. I'm like wired <laughs> on one, dude. I'm totally on one. <laughs> by the way, thank you for your honesty and your transparency here today. Of course, today. man. Hey, can I ask, like, the relationship that you have now? You you are in a relationship, right? Yeah, I am. Why does the internet think yeah. you guys broke up? Um, cause like we we were like. We were never really like a social media couple on purpose. Uh. I I I feel like a lot of people kind of thought that we were and like we were like fully like a public couple and I feel like in relationships no matter what you kind of like there's if it's authentic you don't have to like post it, you know? Uh. So like we weren't really posting each other. I was still seeing her all the time. Um but yeah, I I feel I feel like like that's that's probably why people thought that because like we weren't as active on social media or what whatnot. But everybody's gonna jump to conclusions mm-hmm. always, you know. That's just how it is. People like a story. Yeah, they love a story. It is like that is interesting. I didn't even think that like you know that you don't post that often about each other. But you did post a photo of the two of you maybe yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we took those photos at the um. At the music video shoot, actually. And, um, yeah, I was like, th- th- these are sick pics. I'm going to post it. But that's how it is. That's how, like, me and my relationship are. It, 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 it's not going to be... I'm not, I'm not just going to post something. Uh, h- how do I word what I'm trying to say? You're not just going to post something to please people. Or yeah, like, to please people or whatever. Like, I'm going to post it when, like, I want to post it. I'm not posting it for other people. I'm posting it because I like the photo. Or... You know what I'm saying? I'm not 100%. posting it for our relationship, like for our relationship to get like views or something. You know what I mean? Like that's not. Uh, I just post it because I like the photo. Well, speaking of stories, can you you kind of dissect the drama that surrounds the, the the single? Which, by the way, you can listen to all of Landon's music. This song included. It's waiting for you on Amazon Music. Just click the link below. Hell uh, yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> friends with your ex. So, is this about you being friends with Charlie and then turning into something more? Um. 
No. Okay. The song is called Friends with Your Ex. So technically me being friends with Charlie's ex-boyfriend. Oh, I but see. But a lot of people, like, when they hear the song, are kind of, like, listening to it as, like, a shot or, like, a diss at him, which is totally not. It's It's more about, like, falling in love with somebody that you're technically, like, not supposed to. Yeah. You know? Um, but... Yeah, me and me and uh me and her ex boyfriend's relationship was like kinda growing apart. And one night, uh I, I was actually this is when I was in my little going out era and uh I got a DM from Charlie and I was like, Fuck it. Like I I'm gonna I'm gonna go hang out with her. And we hung out and then the next day I took her to lunch with my dad and my sisters the, the day after like i literally went to her house slept over there and was like hey you want to come to dinner like that's with, a uh, move right uh, uh, uh and I, I think back and i uh, i look back and i'm like dude that's so fucking funny um you but cemented I was like, it yeah i was like i yeah i want her i was like i want her i like this and i did it and then we we've been you know <laughs> together dude. ever since wow yeah do you break that news to him, or do you just want him to find out on his own? No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like, I, I was definitely not gonna be like an asshole, and I was like, hey, I would still love to be your friend, but I just wanted to let you know. And I, I, I sent that. I, I sent a, uh, uh, first I tried to call, didn't get a, a answer. And this before anybody uh, had taken photos of us out together, and if it was out anywhere, mm-hmm. and I sent him a voice memo, and, um. I just got a call, and I just uh, haven't, we haven't talked since then, you know? Um, But I definitely wanted to be a man about it and be like, hey, I would still, uh, you know, I mean, I I totally get his side of it, too, because if one of my homies called me and was like, yo, I'm, I might start hanging out with your ex, I'd be like, fuck you. So I totally get that, but you can't really... Choose who you end up falling in love with, you know? I do get that very, yeah. very much. And it's... we're young, and and I genuinely hope that one day there could be no problems between anybody. I think know? growth and time will heal everything. Yeah, totally. And at the end of the day, like, they weren't right for a reason, and yeah. you guys are right for, yeah. you know, whatever that time may be. Could be forever. Who knows? Yeah. And in that time, like, yeah, wounds heal. Yeah, totally. And I, and I, my, my, my intentions were never to hurt anybody. I just followed kind of what my heart was telling me to follow at the time, you know. And it didn't end up, end up being like a, like a bad decision. It's a year later, and we're still together, you know. Ah. So, but once again, yeah, no bad blood. Like I, I would, I would love to be cool with everybody. Honestly, and, and now the song comes out. Do we think that a song like this ends up healing or helping heal, or does it re, you know, it definitely will reignite the flame a little bit, okay. unfortunately. Um, but dude, as a musician, I try to uh, I try to write about real life experiences, and that's what I did here. And I just hope the rest of the world can take it how they want it and enjoy it and listen to it interpret it in their own ways and um i just hope that it moves somebody you know and i just can't wait to release more music after this how many songs have you made in preparation for this era or project to get to the single dude i probably have like over 250 songs in the vault 250. Oh, not so not like finished. These but are like Landon Barker. Ideas. Not OTG Landon. Not OTG Landon. What does OTG even stand for? That was called On the Grind. That was <laughs> when it. I first started making music ever. And that started on my laptop and a gaming headset <laughs> with like the little microphone. Sick. Um, do you do that without your dad knowing or what? Yeah. I mean, I, I would show him it and he'd be like, dude, you didn't have the auto tune in the right key. And I, cause like there was like a little auto tune thing and it said, uh, and I would like turn it up and it would be like totally like not in the right key. Cause I didn't even know that you had to put a key to it. So I'd just be playing my dad all these songs and I'd just rap on YouTube beats. And then I would start releasing them on Spotify and, <laughs> and whatnot. And then finally, like I did one with my dad when I was like 12. <laughs> and 
It's called I Don't Need Her. It's actually uh, still yeah, up, but it, is. It, it it will be taken down soon, unfortunately. Well, then so. you had your uh, second single called Trust, and then I'm Sorry was the third. Yeah. <laughs> Classics. Classics. <laughs> <laughs> From yeah, dude, vault. no, but it's crazy. That was all, like, me on, on you, you know, remember, like, TuneCore? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like, that was all me just uploading songs on TuneCore. Now I'm, like, fighting to get them taken down, like, <laughs> figuring out how. Um... <laughs> But yeah, funny time. But yeah, at that, at that age, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to rap. Um, didn't really go too far with it, but... Um, Is there any quality or anything that you put into that process or those songs that you carry with you today as you make music? Totally, man. Like, Because I, I also had another one come out called Holiday when I was like 16, and I was still rapping. It was a bit better, you know? And I always like love that I can come at any genre in the studio like the other day i was making like a strokes-esque song mm. and uh while making the song i i still like kind of have a little bit of like a rappy-ish flow on verses even with friends with your ex i kind of have like a rappy-ish flow on verses and then my like uh pop punk roots come out on like choruses and all that stuff is so cool it's so cool especially when you see like another artist with their roots jumping into another genre like mgk for instance he's a rapper his roots are rap he did a pop punk album but it was swaggy because he used to be a rapper there's so many like same with dominic fike dominic fike is fully making indie alternative music so you know good. such a good album that album was incredible his last album it's really phenomenal. um he has rap roots. Like, dude, I literally was scrolling on TikTok and saw like an old video mm. of like him and like had to have been like 2016, just straight rapping, like on some SoundCloud rap shit. And it's crazy because he has those rap roots. That's why I'll hear him on these rap verses in a straight up indie song and like on, on some Weezer shit, you know? It, it, it's tight. I, I love when artists do that. It's the coolest thing I think you could ever do. What are you thinking, Dan? Is your dad drumming on Friends with Your Ex? He is. What's it like having him drum on a song? Like, do you give him any direction? Because I feel like that'd be weird. Absolutely not. I'm just like, dude, <laughs> go crazy. Originally, but but uh, 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 on that song, it was originally me, um, a writer named Nick Long, who's an incredible songwriter. Um, it was me, him, and then my engineer, Noah, and producer. His name is Noah Made This. You guys check him out. He's oh, great music. I feel like I know, like, at least that username. Yeah, dude, it, it, it's funny. He's like, he's like fully making like screamo music. He, he's dope. He's super dope. But he also like produces for me. So originally it was me and him and Nick Long in a session, and uh, he had like all these uh, like fake drums, I guess you can call them. And we made the song, and then I showed it to my dad. My dad liked it. Put live drums on it. Finished it up, and it came out amazing. I'm I'm, I'm honestly really proud of it. And it's just been done in this stage like in this exact way that we were hearing it now for no a no year. no so there was the ian version that's right that's then right. um it didn't line up with ian's release dates yeah. and after that uh there was another version where it was like a little bit less like pop punky then there was a pop punk version there it went through it went through its whole cycle of different versions and i feel like i, I do that a lot with songs I, I really like to hear them in all different worlds to like figure out which one hits the hardest, you know? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. By the way, you can listen to all the music. It's waiting for you on Amazon Music. Uh, Explain up? this fake fight thing that happened, because the whole Wait, everybody gotcha. thought you got your ass kicked. Wait, it was everybody fake? did. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you so believed it. Was it. Fake. Well, I don't so, know. I did, honestly didn't even see a video of it. I announced that it was fake uh, yesterday, actually. Uh. So the whole idea was in my music video, uh, which everybody will see when they watch it, at the end, there's a big fight scene, you know? And we grabbed a clip from the fight scene, but like a clip taken on just like a phone. And we just started airing it out on different TikTok accounts, like random ones. <laughs> and then, dude, these videos are getting like millions of views. And uh, the whole thing was I, I got the, the actor from the music video that I fought to make a TikTok, like calling me out, being like, I beat his ass at the party the <laughs> other day, whatnot. And then I responded to it, and I'm like, well, this fight has, like, really, really changed my life. Like, I'm tired of people thinking I got my ass beat. Go click the link in my bio. The link in my bio was a pre-saved link. <laughs> so it was just a fun little Bravo. thing that me and my team were, like, 
thinking about doing, and, and, and it ended up being cool. And people that think it's corny are going to think it's corny, but the only reason that it really works out is because it's, like, based on the video, <laughs> you know? This is some, some fun. Well done. Thank you. Because uh, in, my my, in my prep, they thought it was real, so... That's so funny. Yeah, no, a lot of people did. There was tons of headlines like Landon Barker gets his ass beat and Landon Barker gets yeah, beat dude. up at a party. I love it. It's so funny. Impressive. Dude, it was, yeah, it was, it was fun. Can I ask something that uh, is definitely kind of funny as fuck? Of course. Uh, you privated a YouTube video where you did a QA. and a I did? Yeah. And you had mentioned that your celebrity crush at the time <laughs> uh, was your, is your current stepsister. Step aunt. Step aunt? Is that how that works? I don't know. What's the family tree on that? Okay. Jesus Kylie, Christ. Kylie um, Jenner okay, was the yeah. Answer. Yeah. When I was like <laughs> So let me rewind. I mean it's okay. Uh, let's it's rewind. totally okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We weren't family at yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. You didn't you know. know. We were not. Exactly. <laughs> Unless you're that so, a Raven or a Nostradamus or I don't know. Someone, like, <laughs> right, right, right. Cleo. So yeah, once again, my dad and Courtney, I think, got married like three years ago. But yeah, when I was like 13, uh, 12-ish, 13. Well, Courtney and my dad have been friends for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I would always, if if Courtney was having, like, a Halloween party, Christmas party, whatever it was, I would just go over there and be, like, always, like, obsessed with Kylie. Like, that was my childhood crush. She knows that, too. <laughs> she she knows that I, I used to have a crush on her. Like, Courtney fully told her when I was younger and whatnot. Um, but, I mean, dude, if you ask any 14-year-old boy in... in 2016 yeah. who their celebrity crushes Kylie it's Jenner. gonna be Kylie Jenner not saying that that people still don't have a crush on Kylie Jenner it's just not allowed you know <laughs> over here <laughs> I gotta say uh your dad and Courtney the love is like so real and beautiful and pure and like dude like I'm gonna be like a weird I haven't seen much of the new version right, of the right. Kardashian show but dude, I watched a couple episodes yeah, <laughs> T you don't watch it at all um I'll watch the episodes I'm in. I got, I got but it. I just overall don't really watch a lot of TV. Like, the TV shows that I love are the ones that you could kind of put on in the background, like yeah. a modern family. And where exist you don't, around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like, kind of look at your phone, be doing whatever, look up, and you can still tune into it. Like, like, like shows where the episodes don't really line up, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But I watched to just see the new format, and I ended up being so deeply inspired by the love that Courtney and your dad share. Right. And then on top of that, like being hit with something that like I would have never known, which which is like your dad is such a gentleman. Like the yeah. episode where he goes to Robert Kardashian's grave to ask he like his permission to marry his daughter is like makes me want to ball my eyes out. Yeah. It is one of the most beautiful pieces of reality TV, but also life I've ever seen. Like really beautiful and pure and thank you. He's such a great that. guy. Yeah, he come from yeah, good people. Thank you so much. That's really beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And then I didn't watch the other episodes. That's where it ended. But, like, it was beautiful. <laughs> like, I loved it. Yeah, that's awesome. It was inspiring and really special yeah, and yeah. really cool. You must learn a lot from being around your dad, yeah? I would hope. Dude, totally. Assume? Totally. My dad's very romantic. I've been told I'm romantic as well. Okay. And I, and, and, and I definitely get that from him. And like, you're, He definitely goes over the top. You're also very too. respectful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, he is, too, from yeah, what yeah, I see yeah. on a reality TV show. In one He's episode. very, like... Dude, I'm I'm literally, we're, we're very very alike, and, and it's crazy. A lot of people tell me that like our voices sound alike. Like, I'll call my my sister and I'll be like, Bama. She'll be like, What, Dad? And I'm like, It's me. Like our voices <laughs> really really have ended up sounding similar, a little bit different, but but very very similar. It's funny too. Sometimes Charlie will call me, and my dad will be sitting next to me, and he 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 loves prank calls, so he'll pick up the phone and be like, Hello, and then she'll be like. Landon? And then, and then he'll be like, I love you, baby. Like, for pretending to be me, like, in my voice. And I'll be like, that was my dad. <laughs> and she'll be like, oh, my God, I thought it was you. But it, it is really weird to reach that age of life where you, you do realize that you are so alike. You're so like your parents. Like, you can, yeah. you, you're aware enough to see those similarities in a yeah. bunch of different areas, good or bad. Yeah, like, good or because bad. Because they're both exactly, there. Exactly, dude. Like, I, I, I see it. Trust me. Yeah. And by, and by the way, I think a part of life and growth and the and, and healthy is being able to accept the good and bad. Yeah. Because like you want to grow from the bad and then embrace the good, no? Dude, totally. I and I, I've I've totally seen like the good and bad in my parents in me. Me too. It's it's crazy. It's gnarly. Like life is weird yeah, that way. It's super weird. But then it's also weird to get to an eventual stage where like you, you want to, you know, do it again and make a human being that looks like you and is the same exact thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. You'll get there. You're very young. Yeah. Isn't One it day, crazy? Man. I, don't, I don't want to have kids anytime soon, though. You're 19. That's wild. Yeah. Gnarly. I feel like, I feel like, um, I don't know. Personally, right now, I'm just like toddlers and, and kids. And I, I, I don't think I could be like a good dad at this point in life, you know? Yeah. And you have like so many babies around you. you can go yeah, like, a, I feel like I, I can I can wait it out, you know. <laughs> go be an uncle or whatever you are in that family like, tree. Call me back at like twenty eight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you like hang out with babies like for an hour and then yeah, peace. Leave. Do you think it's unfair for people to compare your music to your dad's? Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Fuck it, yeah. You're in a bad place because, like, if people love it, they're going to be like, well, it's only good because of his exactly, dad. Exactly, dude. And if it dude, sucks, I they're actually, like, this sucks. It's not his dad. Exactly. Like, yeah, he'll never live up to his dad if the song sucks. If the song is good, it's only because his dad co-produced it. Yeah, you can't win. You know win. what I'm saying? You literally <laughs> can't. But it's also a blessing and a curse. And I, and I continue to say this because, one, a lot of people um, that are in, like, a situation where they're making music similar to me didn't... Uh, pop out of the womb with all these eyes on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, so that's the blessing side of it. But yeah, dude, high expectations. But I've, 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 I've learned just to stay, stay kind of off the internet. And I, I see, I, I know a lot of people that are like slowly just like deleting everything mm -hmm. and just like focusing on their stuff, putting it out. And they don't read their comments and they just have like their team do it. And I think that's really fucking cool. Because then you could just be yourself. Healthy. Because, dude, I'll see a comment on, on there like, damn, can 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 he just fix his hair? Or, like, I hate his pants. Or wh whatever it is. And then I'll never wear those fucking pants again. And like, it's or I'll, I'll never get my hair cut like that again. It's, yeah. like, it's really fucking cruel. And yeah. it's crazy how, like, I don't know. I guess words hurt. Even in the comments are, like, fuck, like, his face looks chubby or like whatever it is, man, that I'm fucking sitting there like trying to like stick your watching, <laughs> watching how, what angles I'm doing and watching what I'm eating and shit. And it's like, it's almost cooler to just like not even look at it. Uh, yeah, it is. You can't be a product of strangers feedback. And exactly. Comments. And, and as long as you're doing what you love and as long as you're fucking happy and you're passionate about it, it doesn't matter if it only breaks through to 15 people or 15 million people. As long as, like, those 15 people see the vision and see what you're doing, that's all that fucking matters. By the way, 100%. And consistency and quality and honesty. Yeah. And pri prioritizing your health. If you do that consistently, it'll pay off. Yeah, fuck yeah. You'll reach the, the, the people it needs to reach. Yeah. Honestly. A totally. Big, big reminder, the single is waiting for you. It's just sitting on Amazon Music. If you want to listen to it, go for it. Do it. It's the do right it. decision. Um, do we have an, obviously an album is coming, but is there a timeline in your head that you're working backwards from or what? Um, honestly, I have enough songs to put in, put out an album, but I want to be curious, cur curated with it. And I want it to have a theme and I want to like, I want it to be like an experience over it just being like an album that you click through. Totally. I want it to be like, I, I just, I just want to like really, really think it out and make sure every, like, I almost want it to be like a movie, like a storyline to every single song. So I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna, gonna work towards that and hopefully an album by next year, but expect singles, a, a few singles until that day. Sweet. Th this single is giving, you know, putting a period on what was so you can go and move forward on what will be. Exactly. Yeah. And, once again, I feel like the single is really cool because it opens the doors to rock and pop punk and a little bit of pop in there too, you know? Like the verses are really, really poppy. And I'm I'm just really, really stoked on it, honestly. What are you thinking, Dan? What songs were you performing on the Blink Tour? Dude, that's that's a whole crazy uh, situation. So I was performing Friends With Your Ex. I was performing uh, Die in California, the song with Machine Gun Kelly. Um, I was performing a uh, few unreleased ones, probably like four unreleased ones, and then a plus 44 cover. Oh. Yeah. So some people had to like kind of thug it out <laughs> and like sit through it. But <laughs> I, I got a lot of great feedback and a lot of uh, negative feedback as well. And I, I, I was just hyped to do it. I, I got the opportunity and obviously took it and got that experience mm -hmm. of 
playing in a stadium. And I went into it realizing like, dude, this is going to be fun. And I'm going to use this as motivation because I probably won't be playing a stadium for at least a few more years that size. Hopefully, you, hopefully, you know, like could be could be in 20 years, could be in 10, could be in five. But I just took it as like, I probably won't be playing this for a little while. When you're playing on release music and it's in front of people that like are hearing it and receiving it for the very first time, are you taking their feedback and applying it to the music moving forward before it Fuck comes out? Yeah. Or are you just. Fuck yeah. Um, dude. And I, I had people like. I, I have a song called It's All Your Fault. And I and I had. The, the the hook literally uh, says, like, fuck you in it. And I'm like, put your middle fingers up. Everybody had their middle fingers up in the whole stadium. And I was like, this is fucking tight. And then I saw ones that were a little more quiet. And then I saw ones that are a little more hype. And uh, that's one of the most difficult fan bases to play for. Oh, what, yeah. they're, what they're called is elder emos, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, those are the fucking hardest because they're so, like die hard on like the older stuff yeah, you know yeah. and they're not really open to the newer stuff so it was like a pretty difficult crowd i had some dead crowds i had some fun crowds but my highlight of it all is i i, I got a mosh pit at one of those shows sick i i jumped and down and i and i got a mosh pit at one of those shows and live nation was not happy about it i'm pretty <laughs> sure well you did it that's fine because apparently i i didn't know this like you could go to jail for technically starting a riot because yeah. a mosh pit is technically a riot. Mm. So, like, from now on, now that I know this, like, you can't be like, open the pit up, open the pit up. That's, like, not allowed. It's crazy. Now they got to do it on their own. Yeah, you could you could be like, like yeah. open it up, but you can't say mosh. Interesting. If you tell mm. them to mosh, that's when you could start, like, if because somebody gets mm. injured, you, it's you on know? you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you hope the, crazy, mu dude. the music just moves them naturally without having to be ordered. Yeah. Dude, I was in the pit and I and I ran down there. I'm in the pit and I'm like, "All right, guys, let's go." Whatever. And the song drops and I'm singing and I see motherfuckers flying by, just fists. Like I felt <laughs> like I was in a slow motion movie. Boom. And I'm like, "I gotta get the fuck out of here." And I like grab my manager, throw him in front of me, run back on stage <laughs> real quick. Uh, I was like, this is the most un rock star shit I've ever done, but I'm <laughs> fucking scared right now. It was fucking terrifying. Like grown ass men just mm, 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 going fast as fuck, it's you scary. know? The only mosh pit I got stuck in was weirdly at a Boys Like Girls concert. It didn't Whoa. really necessarily make the total sense, but it was scarring. Yeah, dude, it's pretty pretty crazy. Like the, the, there was a my best friend Mikey almost got like sucker punched. Like it it, it came out pretty cool. <laughs> it came out pretty fucking cool. Rock on. You yeah, it was got, great. You said you got some negative feedback. What was that negative feedback, and what do you take from that? My favorite thing to do, which is not 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 good at all but my favorite thing to do when i would go on those stages um right when i get off got off stage i would look on twitter mm. my favorite thing to do after every the, single performance but also the worst thing to <laughs> do <laughs> i'm dangerous yeah dude and and i uh, th there were some comments like he killed it like he did so good and there was one comment that was like Landon Barker just tried to get the whole stadium to sing his song back, and it was only like ten people that sang it back to him. I was like, he, he, she was uh, embarrassing, and I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah, who cares? And then and then there was like good ones, you know, bad ones. But uh, Landon Barker sucks. Get him off the tour, or he was great. Can't wait to see what he has lined up. Can't wait for him to release music. Like honestly, there was a lot more positive than negative, and a lot a lot a lot of it was really really nice, and it was like. But, but, but like my stage setup had like mannequins and like rock starish clothes, and they were like, Landon Barker brought like Hot Topic on stage. Like <laughs> there, there were some like good ones too. Like some that made me laugh. And then they were like, Landon has like great, great music. Can't wait to hear it. So it was just a mixture. Honestly, you, got, you get good with bad, but also like you gotta let the good weigh. The good always outweighs the bad, but it's hard totally. mentally for that to it is. sink in. It is, and I, and I really don't don't check comments. But that's the thing about social media is, like, that's why people are so addicted to it. And that's why there's, like, excuse me, like, clout chasers in L.A. Because everybody's always searching for that validation. An instant validation. An and instant feedback validation. And I, I, I catch myself doing it. Huh. You know, like, I'll post a video and I'll be like, I'll be like, I don't like how many views this has. Or, like, I don't like how many likes this got. I'm deleting it. Or, like, whatever. It's like that fucking... Because once you feel that validation, you're always looking to fill that void. It's the lamest shit ever. Bro, it's a drug. It's so corny to me. And it's like, 
everybody kind of catches themselves doing it. Even like motherfuckers that get paparazzi, they'll sit there and like look at their paparazzi yeah. photos and be like, oh, I hate this one. I've seen like literally hung out with people that sat there and watched like videos of them like coming out of clubs like on paparazzi. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, dude, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I, I, it's so crazy, dude. The people love that shit. And, like, the people that call the paparazzi on themselves, oh. that shit's crazy, too. I'm, sure, I'm sure you know a lot of them. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I've definitely I've definitely seen it. It's a part of the game. Nobody ever says it, but you're just like, dude, they're, why ooh. are they here? Exactly. Yeah. How'd they get here? Exactly, yeah. They're not waiting at the end of their street and following them. A lot of celebrities, though, get followed like that, but... Oh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. It's not everybody, you know? Yeah. Like, you could you could see Justin Bieber and the paparazzi. Those videos, I love watching those videos of him and them beefing. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty interesting, it's but fair. I feel bad for the guy, obviously. Oh, my God, yeah, I do. I feel They're really fucking on his ass, but it's 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 unfair. It's funny. He doesn't deserve yeah. it, and I just... I wish him the most peace and space. Me, and too. Just opportunity to be exactly who he is, because who he is is so special and... Really He's kind and empathetic an and the warmest yeah. heart and like just a good person. Just a really good person that Justin Bieber. Yeah, dude. He's he's a fucking sweetheart. Like he when I was younger, one day I was just like, dude, I had to have been like 11, 12. He was actually my next door neighbor at one point. And we get a knock on the door. I was like, what the fuck? And I I go I go to like see who's at the door. With my dad, dude, it's him. He's like, uh, do you guys want to ride, like, uh, skateboards? <laughs> and my dad and him, like, rode bikes and skateboards and shit. And it was just crazy because I was, like, 12 years old and Justin Bieber was riding skateboards yeah, with us. But all the human being wants is to be a human being. Yeah. Hell yeah. And it, it was so cool. It, it, it was really, really cool. And it's crazy for me, too, growing up around, like, like with famous parents, you know? I see, like both sides of it like i've been at disneyland with my dad and i think one time i counted how many pictures he took and it was 250 what at disneyland so like dude i totally get it so i totally empathize for these people you know it was 250 me and my best friend at the time counted it i was like yeah i was I was way younger dude but what's but, yeah. more amazing is that your dad stopped for all of them every single one of them every single one of them wow crazy right and it almost fucks up your trip, but oh, like yeah. almost, <laughs> yeah, dude. And <laughs> totally I, dude, he's up. been in the bathroom, and and people have asked for photos, like while he's peeing. Yeah. And like, it's people are relentless. Like people really do treat celebrities like they're oh, not yeah. human. It's fucking crazy. I've seen that many, 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 many yeah, times. Dude. A lot of my very close friends. But what I will tell you is like two hundred and fifty photos. At, I was at Disneyland as well one time, dude. I, I some somebody's mom comes up and asks me for a photo. Uh, well, no, so, sorry. The daughter asked me for a photo, and then the mom does. The mom kisses me on my cheek. I'm like, dude, you're that's, a full on stranger. That's this disgusting. is crazy. Weird. So, I went on a date, and one I time. could tell like it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like in a mean way, but it's like boundaries. No, it's and but they don't exist. So, I went on a date one time. It's yeah. So stupid. They were they're very famous. They were in a really big children's TV show, like the biggest, 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 biggest Ooh, in the, the world. The person we went on a date with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we were going out all the time, but then. Like her mom, like, or sat me down and like gave me rules. Like you can't go to subway uh, on subways or underground transit. You can't go on uh, go to theme parks. Like there was just a fucking giant list of things I couldn't do. And her I, mom did. Yeah, her mom told me things I couldn't Whoa. do with her. Yeah, I remember the conversation. Like it was yesterday. That's crazy. Yeah, it was gnarly. But I get it. She was right. Uh, so uh, I fucked up and wow. we went to the Central Park Zoo and this woman and her family and they were from some Spanish country. I'll remember it, like, again, like, it happened this morning. She runs, uh, we're just, the two of us are just walking, going into the zoo. And this woman runs up, grabs her face, and kisses her on the lips. Mm. And I'm, like, we're really young at the time. Not really young, but, like, maybe 16, 17, you know, 18. Wow. And, I, like, I, I tried to separate. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. And I've, I would go on to see, like, hundreds of examples similar to that. But like, dude, it's yeah, it's fucked dude, it's, up. <laughs> boundaries go away because people feel it's like they're fucking they know you, and mm -hmm. and 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 it's very this para yeah. social para yeah, medium dude. relationship that exists where, you know, they feel like you're a part of their life. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and you're not like, though. Yeah, it's cause like, yeah, it's crazy, and, and, and it's 
It's like people think of them as like fictional characters. Yeah. Almost. It's it's nuts. But I gave your dad so much credit because I have Yeah, I give I, him credit too. I have friends who have tried to tackle meet and greets that were set up to take pictures with people that were a quarter of the size and they couldn't get through it. So the fact that he did 250 photos at Disneyland. Yeah, crazy. And it was so funny. Like I remember yes. looking at looking at like the goofy line and then the, my dad's line that he had. <laughs> <laughs> the goofy line was not as long as my dad's line. <laughs> But yeah, man. I Amazing. Mean, it's a crazy thing. I, I definitely feel for the, for the Biebs, but I I see a lot of those videos. Well, you're about to have a new baby brother. Do you ever think about the life that that kid's being born into? Yeah, dude. And it's like, I don't, is that still Gen Z? That's Generation Alpha, I believe. Yeah. So I feel like he. Yeah. I mean, we're we're almost twenty years apart. So I feel like <laughs> our lives are gonna be very very different. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Sure, he'll have like the iPhone fucking 25, you know? Like, <laughs> are you excited? Uh, yeah, hell yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. I've never I've never really had like a baby sibling. It's always been me and my sister, two years apart. That's interesting. But it's like it's cool though because like it, it'd be different if like it happened when I kind of need the attention as a kid. I feel like I'm I'm out of the house. I'm. I'm not really like I I don't need the. No, you're not competing. The, you know, yeah. It, it would have been hard if I was like 10 years old and I like that was all my dad could do, but now that I'm in a place like that, I feel like I'm like an adult now. It's sick. I'm I'm super happy for them. It's special. Yeah, it is. Big reminder. Kind of wish she was a girl though. Really? Wish I was only the Barker, the only Barker boy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So there is a competition. Not a competition, but. <laughs> There's another boy, unfortunately. That could be a new I favorite. I wish he was a yeah. girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Landon's music, by the way. It's all waiting for you. It's in the link in the description below. Amazon Music, it's all there. Final thoughts, Dan? Does Charlie call you Landlord as a nickname? Yeah, there, there's a story behind it. What is it? We, I was at this Hollywood, it was Hollywood escape room something. Oh. And I, and I, and I, wa I, I went there slightly intoxicated. <laughs> and the person at the front asked me for my name because you need like a little name badge to like walk into the escape room. And I told them my name was Landlord. And I thought <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. And I was like crying, like, like on the verge of tears, like laughing. And I told them my name was Landlord. And ever since then, Landlord. Damn. It's a nice nickname. Yeah. Is that is this the nickname just between the two of you, or is it, it made its way? It kind of made its way. Got it. Like, I feel like everybody kind of, like, picked up on it. That's cute. Yeah, it's a fun one. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. No, dude, I really appreciate your honesty and your time. And, thank uh, you. I have a lot of respect for you. And Thank you. Me, you as well, man. You're doing it, so. I'm excited to be on here. I've been wanting to be on here for a while. Not yet. We've been talking about it for a minute. I know. It's, it's exciting. Sick. Yeah, man. Did I'm we cover it all? I'm excited. I think we covered a lot, yeah. You sure? Yeah. I think I'll have to come back when the album's out or an EP, whatever's coming next. Yeah, I would love to. We'll talk about that. The couch is always here for you, my friend. Beautiful. I appreciate I'll you. I'll probably see you out again soon, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We may, uh, maybe we'll swing by the, you have a release party coming? You have yeah, yeah. Coming I sent it to you, right? Yeah, you did. Sick. Yeah, I'd love to have you performing. You. Giddy up. Yeah, it'll be fun. Let's go. By the way, music from Landon. Again. Check it out. It's on Amazon Music. There's a link below. I appreciate you. Friends Thank with you. your I ex. Appreciate you. Friends with your ex. Landon Barker, everybody. Oh yeah.